Now, in the last episode, we did manage to smash out a whole bunch of 12 volt, and we are this close to finishing this thing off. As you guys know, I mounted three jerry cans on the front of the trailer, but they are not plumbed up yet. So I'm hoping today that we can figure out a system where we can have pressurized water at the rear for washing dishes and hands and just hose and feet off. Then the moment we have all been waiting for is hooking this thing onto coal, getting it down to a public way bridge and figuring out our weights. And also just seeing it behind coal is something I'm very excited about. So guys, let's get into today's video and smash this thing out. So as you guys know, we mounted these jerry cans on the front and typically on a jerry can, you can use that little bung there and put a tap in it. But because of where my barb sits on the trailer, I can't actually put anything in there. So what I've got is these, uh, what we call tank flanges. So these are gonna mount from underneath and then I can cut them short so that it sucks most of the water out of the jerry can. And I've also gone ahead and bought a little 12 volt pump that is 11 liters a minute. So this thing coupled with 60 liters of water should be pretty awesome to actually have at the back of the trailer. I did really want a retractable hose rule at the back and then create like a bulkhead where we can actually just pull out a hose. Couldn't really find anything that was gonna work for our situations. So the next best thing is a spiral hose. Now this is a real cheap one. I just wanted to try it out before I actually commit to buying a decent one. But what I'm thinking with that is if we have a fitting at the end of the trailer here, we can actually just keep that hose somewhere in the trailer and we can just pull it out, use it, and then put it back when we are ready. This rear of the trailer being our kitchen area is probably where we're gonna be standing and doing most of our cooking and cleaning. The thing that I don't really know about is uh, obviously you don't want the floor where you're gonna be standing to turn into mud. But I think that hose is about seven and a half meters, so it'll work out that we can move it right out to the side and we're not gonna get a really muddy section at the back of the trailer. Now this is the gas bottle holder I've got, so it is actually gonna be going right about there so that when the kitchenette is folded out, we can actually just run a line over to the gas bottle. So I'm thinking about putting our garden fitting right about here somewhere so that we can just click on and have the water at the back. Now for washing dishes and washing hands, I do also wanna have a little tap at the front just to give us that option of keeping that dirty water away from the rear. So I'll probably be putting one right about on the draw bar here as well, and we'll just have a ball valve on that so we can shut that off. So I'm actually very excited about this little mod because it means that we're gonna have running water on the bloody camp trailer. One thing I'd really like to do in the future is actually have a hot water system in the trailer with a gas bottle. I definitely think that would be really cool and it's something that I probably will do in the future. So what I'm thinking with this pump is that it can go right about here. Ultimately, I wouldn't really like this here because we've got electronics. Now, nothing's gonna happen to this dual battery system because this is waterproof and obviously a battery is waterproof, but I don't like the thought of having water up near here if this was to fail. But unfortunately, there's not much I can do because these water pumps aren't really designed to be mounted up underneath, especially if you were to ever go through a water crossing or anything like that. The last thing you want is your pump to be submerged in water. So this is very exciting because this is one of the last major things to be done to the trailer. So it's very exciting and I am very excited to get it on the back of coal and I know a lot of you guys are too. So let's jump into today's work so we can get this thing finished and hopefully this rain is gonna clear up so we can actually make this happen today. Otherwise, I'll have to come back another day. Once again, Diesel's doing bloody nothing. Tell you, mate, I really gotta bloody find another apprentice here because you're just bloody getting that lazy.
quick little update here. We have the tanks done and we also have the pump now mounted in the trailer. I bought these tank flanges thinking that they would work, but stupid me didn't think that you can't get this side of the tank flange into the inside of a jerry can because the inside of a jerry can is only that big. So that was a massive fail. But anyway, moving on, what I managed to do, which I think is going to be plenty strong enough, is I actually just drilled a hole that was a little bit smaller than the thread of a half inch barb and I just tapped a brass piece in. I then thread taped and siliconed this fitting in and they're nice and tight. One thing I did actually have to worry about was these bars at the bottom. You can see I've just drawn exactly where that bar is gonna go so I know where to put the barb in the jerry can. Now you guys just see me mount this pump onto the wheel arch here and I've also hole sawed a hole for the hose to go to these barbs. One side of this pump was a thread and the other side come with a barb so it was nice. This thread side I can actually put a 90 on it, send it straight down. Uh, I had to put the hole saw a little bit wider on this one because the hose is actually going to have to bend in. So I'm just about ready to plumb it all up, but I need to figure out exactly where I want my outlets and how I'm going to do my outlets. So I'm just about to make them and then we've got to wire it up. I do have one spare toggle switch and also the bottom one of this switch panel isn't actually hooked up yet. So I could technically go to that. It's probably going to be the easiest thing to go to that, but I also wouldn't mind adding another one in so we can use that one for rock lights or something like that. Anyway, I need to figure out where I want the water to go to and then I need to start plumbing this up. rear you can see I've mounted one of our garden fittings. Just a normal garden fitting that just clicks in like a normal garden hose and it just pops in. Now this hose here was seven and a half meters long but I cut it in half so it should still walk around the whole trailer and I'll probably try and get a hook or something just to be able to hook that on when we're not using it. And over this side you can see I moved the Anderson plug from the side to the top to make way for our tap and I bolted that through the toolbox here so you can just turn that on 
and I added a little bit of a straw just to keep the water away from that plug. And the good thing about moving that up is it's not gonna get hit by a rock and even if we hit something here, it's probably only gonna break this barb and everything else is protected. Now underneath, I ran everything as neat as I could get it and I also added in an inline filter with a ball valve and I added that ball valve in so if we do clean it out and we have 60 liters of water in the tank, we're not gonna lose all the water onto the ground. In the top here, you can see we've got our pump with its own fuse. It is also fused up the top there as well. So we've got our four switches. The bottom switch is now the pump. You can hear it turns on there. Normally all these gang switches are connected to one positive wire, but what I did is disconnected this gang switch completely. I wired that back to my fuse panel and put a 15 amp fuse in. So this switch here is completely separate to all of these switches here. I definitely feel better doing it that way. The pump is maximum 10 amp, but just for peace of mind, I thought it'd be really good to just have that on its own switch and own fuse system. Now, while we're on the wiring, I added this earth strap to connect the body of the trailer to the aluminium top. The main reason for that is all of these lights are earth to our frame. Our frame is earth to this, and now this is earth to where the battery is actually earth to as well. That is a lot of earthing. Moving on, I added a couple more dust seals. Now I thickened this one up at the top and that's just because when I shine light through, I could actually still see a couple little gaps because this trailer so old that it's actually just bowed in so many different spots. Also added a rubber to the front here so that when this swing out door shuts, it is gonna fully seal and be dust proof. I do need to silicon up the holes where my hoses come through from the pump, but I wanna do that when I've actually got a nozzle. I do have the silicon, I just don't have the nozzle and I know I'll make a mess, so. Now the other thing I did, which is actually really exciting for me in a weird way, I managed to mount these side wings here. Now I did just use two bits of angle top and bottom on both sides. Now the top here isn't actually gonna get screwed down at all and that is because when it's all in, it is super tight and it's not gonna go anywhere. The reason I'm really excited about it is look how neat it is. Every time I used to put the top on, these things would just fall out of position and it was really, really annoying and I didn't really know how I was gonna mount that but the good thing about it is if we ever have a fuse blow, I just lift this up to get to the fuses and it's nice and easy. Now, the other thing I've done is I mounted my battery uh, control module up here and it is on the positive and negative. And on the up here, you can see that I just get a voltage reading 67%. I can check that it's charging. I can uh, do different profiles and stuff like that. But I think this is really good just because I can view this inside of my car. I don't have to get out and check a voltmeter at the back. So one thing I didn't really think about at the start is if I have this unplugged and turn the pump on to use the tap on the other side, it's actually gonna come out of here. So I probably will put a ball valve on here and just move that mount back a little bit. That way we can isolate the water at both points. Now I'm actually really, really excited to have running water and it really hasn't cost that much. If you guys are wanting, wanting to do this at home, I really think all of this would have been under maybe $500 with the jerry cans. So guys, that's enough talk. I just wanted to update you on what I'd done. Let's fill these jerry cans up and see if the pump actually pumps water and hopefully those jerry cans don't leak. All right guys, these jerry cans are now full, which means we are ready to test it. I did only actually have to fill this one up and it did fill all three, which is really good because we have water on this side and water on that side. All right, now for the moment of truth, guys, let's see if this works. I've got the gun in my hand. We're gonna spray it outside. We're gonna turn the pump on first and hopefully this works. This gun feels really crap to be honest, but this was 15 bucks. I'm not gonna argue. I'm excited, but I'm also very nervous. There's no leaks under the trailer, which is a bloody good sign. I'm gonna check you guys on the tripod and I'm gonna flick the switch. And we're gonna get water and nothing's gonna go wrong because that's what always happens on Rome Life. I'm gonna hold the gun open because I wanna prime it at the same time. See that diesel? That's awesome. God, there's, there's a lot of pressure there, 11.3 liters a minute. Feels like a bloody garden hose. It's not just some little caravan pump, it does like three liters a minute. This is full on, like feels like a garden hose at home. So I probably have to dial it back a little bit. I really think that does have too much flow, but I think that Allen key on top, I can actually adjust the pressure switch on this and I can actually then start backing it off and it's not gonna trigger the pressure switch going in and out. So I might just quickly try that because I don't really wanna use 60 liters of water in six minutes. Okay, so that's worse. I'm gonna try and tune this thing up a little bit so I'll get back to you guys in a sec. 
So I've played around with it for a little bit. I'm very happy with this amount of water coming out. It's still quite a fair bit of water. I'm not gonna lie to you. It'll still actually probably suck those tanks dry. I will still have to be careful with how much water we're using, but I think it's gonna be awesome because more flow actually means that you clean stuff a lot quicker. I'm very, very happy with that. And you can see here that this thing here is working as well. So that is absolutely mint. We are basically done with the trailer now. There is just a couple little things that I do need to tidy up. As you can see, we're working late tonight, which means I'm not gonna get a chance to put this thing on coal and take it down to the Weybridge. I think what we'll do is next weekend, we'll come in here, we'll load it up, we'll pack the drawer, get it ready for basically camping so it's completely ready to just hitch on and go. We'll tow it down to the weigh bridge, which I'm very excited for. Back her on, find out our weights. That'll tell us if we have to upgrade the axle, but if not, we are done. So that is gonna be it for today's episode, guys. So thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Bye.